Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Bridgewater Conservation Commission. Um, it is July 13th, 2023. Uh, we have a quorum, so we can begin the meeting. Um, it is 6 p.m. Um, for the record, the members and staff that are present, we have, um, oh my goodness, Bob Ruley, the Director of Communi Community and Economic Development. Um, we have Sarah Sperber, member, Marilyn McDonald, member, Eileen Prisco, member. Do you see Harry? And it looks from the notes that he was going to be not today on the 13th. He's not going to oh, be Oh, okay. Here. All right. Uh, and myself, Wendy Smith, chair. I'll now read the governor's order for online meetings into the record. Disclosure pursuant to section 20 of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting of the conservation commission for the town of Bridgewater will be hybrid and accessible to the public. Their remote participation to the greatest extent possible. There will be no public attendance permitted. Citizens who wish to tune into the meeting may do so via Zoom. The link or the phone dial-in number is located on bridgewatermaorg um, On the agenda tonight, we have a call to order, which we've done, an approval of minutes, um, public comment, uh, public hearings. We have new business. We have three things, an extension request for 30 Stonehill Lane, a land disturbance permit for 145 Winter Street, a request for determination of applicability for Wyman Meadow and North Fork Preserve. Uh, we have old business, which we don't have any listed. We have conservation commission business, administrative items, discussion of 1185 Pleasant Street, and then adjournment. So with that, um, we'll start out with the approval of minutes. Um, for those that are on, if you had a chance to be able to look over the minutes, um, did people get a chance with the exception of Sarah not being able to open it? I just I just looked, so they looked okay. To me. Okay. I was able to get it open. I there's a couple of things. Marilyn, did you get to look them over? Yep. I'd be and Eileen. Um, I'm not uh sworn in. I only came on because of um in case there wasn't a quorum. And I guess I can still speak, but I you can defer the minutes to the next meeting, Wendy, if you want. Oh, um, do we not have a quorum? With you do. You have Sarah and Marilyn and yourself. And myself. And I looked them over and I got in touch with um, Nicole because there was a couple of things. So I would just, I think, ask if anyone would want to make a motion to approve with suggested edits. And you can do them all at once, just recite the dates. Oh, so right. So it right. was for May 25th, 2023, for June 8th, 2023, and June 22nd, uh, 2023. So anyone want to make a motion to approve with suggested edits? You want, you want to, what are the suggested edits? Um, Harry was missing, I think, from one of the uh members present um it was the wrong chairperson that read the things in because i wasn't there that night so i believe bob read them in yeah. the the disclosure it was minor they okay. were just minor things. so just so we know when we're voting on it what they are sure okay that's a i'll make a motion to approve the minutes um 525 23 6 8 23 6 22 23 with chair suggested edits Thank you. Do we have a second? I will second. Thank you. And a roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Um, Sarah? Aye. And myself, Wendy Smith? Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, next up, we have public comment. So is there anyone that's in the waiting room online that would like to or need to ask a question of the Conservation Commission? not with regards to anything that we're going into tonight. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or need to bring something up? Um, you can use the raise your hand um, thing, sorry, <laughs> or wave at Bob. Pat Neary has her hand up. Okay. Um, can you just give your name and address for the record, please? Sure, it's uh, Pat Neary. 
225 Lakeside Drive. Thank you. And here primarily just to observe, but uh, since we have the public comment, I wanted to inquire as to whether there's any update on that Wetland Protection Act that the Lake NIP group requested. Um, okay, so thank you, Pat. I have not heard of anything um, since that meeting a couple meetings back. Right. And we've had people on vacation, Pat, and sort of coordinating. I mean, I think it's an issue that should be the full commission discussing. So I think the chair had represented I me. Mean, we will we will get to it. Um, okay. It's just coordinating people's schedules. That sounds fine. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for reminding us. <laughs> I don't see anyone else's hand up, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to um, public hearings. We have new business. First up is an extension request for 30 Stonehill Lane. The applicant representative is Patrick Driscoll um, with Vieira and Dijon Filippo. Nailed it. You got it. <laughs> I did it? Very good. So do we have anybody on that would like to speak to the extension? So that would be Pat Driscoll or someone from if, Sierra and if they're not here, then you can continue it to the next meeting. Okay. Bob, Bob question for you though. If it's a have you looked at it, is it just a straight out extension that they wouldn't need to be here? Well, I mean, I can't make that decision. I mean, it's it's straightforward in terms of you know the extension. I mean, there's no explanation as to why and I mean, it's entirely up to your discretion whether you want to grant the extension. So, I mean, out of courtesy, I think that when an applicant has something before uh, any board, they should at least have themselves or a representative explain that. I shouldn't be the one to explain it. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Did that pretty standard. So I was wondering if they just didn't show, like not knowing they didn't need to be here. Okay. I think Mr. Driscoll is fairly uh, aware of how boards work. Uh. Should be. I know it is. Yep. Um, so do we have a motion on that we want to continue the 30 I'll Stonehill make a, Lane? I'll make a motion to continue thir 30 Stonehill Lane. Um, and that'll be to the July 27th meeting. To July 27th. Thank you. Do we have a second? Thanks, Marilyn. Um, and a roll call vote. I, I'm sorry, Eileen, are you not voting at all tonight? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have to take some courses, classes. Oh, okay. Um, Marilyn, oh, sorry, roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Um, Sarah? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. So that will be continued to 727 at 6 p.m. Okay, next up, we have a learn dis uh, land disturbance permit for 145 Winter Street, Map 88, Lot 21. The applicant representative is Steve Kennedy, Strong Point Engineering. Is someone on that would like to share? Eric Dias is here for the applicant. Uh, yes, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. All right, Sitting I'm in your car. I'm on my phone in my truck waiting to walk into another <laughs> meeting. So Excellent. forgive me. <laughs> okay, and just make sure for the record that you give your name and who you're with. Absolutely. For the record, Eric Dias, professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions, here tonight representing Steve Kennedy for the project at 145 Winter Street. Okay, thank you. Um, I We talked about this at the last meeting, Madam Chair. I don't think that you were in attendance, but I'll be very brief about it. Um, there are no wetland concerns on this property whatsoever. We're here solely for the land disturbance permit under the stormwater ordinance. Uh, as you know, the Conservation Commission holds the uh, the key to that. 
Um, it's we've received site plan approval from the planning board. It's been thoroughly vetted through the town engineer. He's given his nod uh, both to the planning board. And I think he sent the letter to the conservation office saying that he's already reviewed it and he's satisfied. Um, I, I'm glad to answer any questions. Unfortunately, I can't share my screen tonight, but you know, whatever I can talk you through, I'm glad to do it. Right. I mean, I guess with with anything that deals with stormwater, we would normally see the plans and, and what is anticipated to be able to use what you're utilizing for it, how you're setting it up. Um, so I don't know if other people are comfortable with like, can you explain? Absolutely. The, Absolutely. You just said the plans were included in the packet. I mean, yeah, all... I reviewed the plans in the packet. Yep, they were there. Oh, okay. Well, he can't share his screen. I think that's what he asked in an email earlier. So I don't, do you have them access to them, Bob? Cause you can share your screen. Yeah. I mean, so I, I think to be efficient with meetings, you know, when we get documents to people in advance, the expectation is you're going to review those in advance, unless there's questions that we're not going to have the applicant go through the whole set of plans again. I sure, don't I understand that, but there might be somebody on that wants to know what's happening and just to see what the plan is is what, what Yeah, they I'm, can I mean it's on the I mean, website. I looked at them too, but I don't have access yeah. to share. Yeah, I mean if members of the public want to review them, they are available on the website. I don't have I don't have the plans with me. I can give a uh, a brief synopsis of the drainage system on the site if you like if that's helpful. Sure. Sure. Um, so this is on the corner of Romney Road and Winter Street. Um, thankfully, you know, this site has very, very good sandy material with deep, deep depths to groundwater. So we were able to take advantage of that. Um, all of the rooftop infiltration on the site is being um, introduced into underground um, infiltration basins. And then off the pavement area, we also have a surface infiltration basin. So we are meeting all of the requirements for peak rate flow. Um, we're exceeding the requirements for groundwater recharge and water quality. We've got groundwater separate, um, ground, uh, excuse me, water quality units in line before anything gets to an infiltration practice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty extensive um, design. And like I said in the beginning, we were very fortunate to have the site that we have. It kind of made our lives a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. Um, so is there anybody that's on in the public, um, abutters, whatever, that have any questions or concerns? You can raise your hand or use the raise your hand. What do you call that thing? I can. I can. <laughs> I am not seeing any, Madam Chair. Excellent. Thanks. How about people, um, Sarah, Marilyn, Eileen? I, I reviewed everything. I have no issues. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Good. Um, I'm just I'm just cruising through one more time, but I didn't have I don't have any questions. Yep. And I had looked at it like a week ago, but I, I didn't have any questions either. So it looks good. So as far as this uh, land disturbance permit for 145 Winter Street, map 88, lot 21, do we have a motion to motion to approve grant approve? Yep. Yeah. We need to close it first, Bob. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, you could ask me that, Marilyn. I just need a reminder. It's okay. It comes with time. Believe me, it comes with time. All right. All right. Motion, to, motion to close uh, land disturbance permit 145 Winter Street, map 88, lot 21. Thank you. And a second? Second. And a roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Um, okay, now do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve land disturbance permit 145 Winter Street map 88 lot 21. Thank you. Second. I will second. Thank you. And with that, a roll call vote. Marilyn. Aye. Sarah. Aye. And myself, Wendy. Aye. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric, you're all set. Thank you all. We appreciate Thank that. Thank you so much. Good Eric, luck you, with your next meeting. Eric, are you going to stay for the Pleasant Street conversation? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Um, next up, we have a request for determination of applicability and RDA for Wyman Meadows and North, North Fork Preserve, map 39, lot 3 and 7. 
The applicant is Owen Gray Wildlands Trust um, and TOB Open Space. Um, Madam Chair, as I told you earlier, the legal ad was not published in a timely manner, so this matter is going to have to be continued as well. Correct. So, Sarah, would you like to make a motion to continue this? Do you have it in front of you? I don't. I, I, I don't think we need to continue something we can't open. They just put it on the next agenda, hon. Oh, really? Yeah. All righty then. So it'll be continued to seven twenty-seven. All right. Well, we stop making that motion, right? No, nope, no, you don't have to. Okay. So if it's not opened, I don't need to to make to get a continuance. All right. Got it. Um, on to old business, we don't have anything. Next up is conservation commission business. We have administrative items. We only have one. It's 1185 Pleasant Street discussion um, regarding the new fire station land. Um, Owen just raised his hand on Zoom. Oh, thank you. Oh. Hi, Owen. Hi. Can, can Hi. You just state, state your name and who you belong to for the record. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, Owen Gray, I'm the stewardship manager at Wildlands Trust. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question about um, the mailings that we've done. Um, so obviously we weren't able to coordinate with that in the ad. Um, we did get over 20 receipts to the 30 letters that I sent out. Um, will we, uh, I mean, sh should we do that again for the next meeting or no, will those? No, you don't. You don't need to do okay. it again. Okay. Just the ad, just so that we have that. Very good. Published. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Is this new fire station? No, there's still, so the guy that wanted to- Can you mute or somebody needs to mute because um, Caitlin is I'm the speaker. I just muted him. Thank you. Okay, so next up, um, we have the discussion for 1185 Pleasant Street. So- That's again. Is that you? That is me again. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Um, for the record, Eric Dias, registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering, um, representing the town of Bridgewater on this one, or at least the fire department. Um, we, we brought this up at the last meeting. So we've been contracted to do all of the civil engineering site design and permitting for the project. And our wetland scientist, Ken Thompson, has identified a vernal pool on the site and gone about the process of having that vernal pool certified. Now, obviously, vernal pools have additional protection on them. And under your bylaw, if a vernal pool is a, holds a certain volume of water, a quarter acre foot of more, it has additional protections. So we did some math, and based on the area of the vernal pool, it would have to be six feet deep to hold a quarter acre foot of water or more. And I anticipated being at a disadvantage tonight. So I had sent some photos to Bob earlier today, and I think he sent them around. Uh, those photos are of that vernal pool area. They were taken on Tuesday, the day after we had those major, major rains. And you can see there's about three inches of water in there. It doesn't hold six feet of water by any stretch of the imagination. So firstly, we don't believe it's jurisdictional under the local. That doesn't mean it's not jurisdictional under the state. Um, but the other thing that we talked about, and I sent around the concept plan with those photos earlier today, is that this project is what's considered to be a limited project, which as you know, means the only way to get into the site, into the buildable area is to go through a resource area. So we have proposed to cross the resource area at its most narrow point, right? Which makes sense because we can probably do it with a full span. We don't have to fill in the resource area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In order for us to do that, that crossing is, not, is going to be within the vernal pool buffer that's protected. So within 100 feet of the vernal pool, I, I believe I've done the math, it's about 70 feet away from the boundary of the vernal pool. We believe this is the right location for this because what happens is if we can't put the entrance here, we have to move it further to the west. As we move further to the west, the BBW gets wider and wider and wider to a point that we're not going to be able to span it. So we're going to have to fill in a portion of the BBW. We're going to end up doing wetland um, 
We're going to end up doing wetland replication, things like that. So from a practical standpoint, it makes more sense to push the entrance a little bit closer to the BBW at that 70 foot mark where the BB, uh, excuse me, to the vernal pool at that 70 foot mark where the BBW is at its most narrow and seek some sort of relief for that, uh, noting that it's really in the grand scheme of things, it's the best option and in and protects the interests and values of the Wetlands Protection Act uh, to the maximum extent that we can on this site. So we're not before you with a proposal tonight beyond the concept plan. What we're looking for at this point is a little bit of guidance from the Conservation Commission because we know this is the critical point of the design. And what we don't want to do is design this whole site thinking that what we're doing makes sense, file a notice of intent, and have you guys tell us to stop moving stuff. Um, so, you know, hopefully some sort of guidance or a consensus that we're on the right track gets us off and running, and we'll be back before you with a formal notice of intent in about a month. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I've got, but I'm glad to answer any questions. Okay. I know that Marilyn had some questions. I have a lot, but Madam Chair, if you have any to start out, certainly go. No, I just have one comment. Like I wasn't here um, for the last meeting, and I think that this was maybe discussed, mentioned, because up came the get in to try to see it, to have a site visit, and I was not able to. I would really like to be able to be there maybe you know eric whether it's with you with other people on the committee that know like where the entrance like where would the entrance be i'm a visual person i really need to like see it it's hard for me i understand what you're saying about the more narrow there's less disturbance if you're able to go through that i would i would personally just like to see it so sure. I don't know if we can set up i'm kind of open um, but it would be nice if we could get a couple other people and we could put in for a meeting if we had to, to post. Sure, it. sure. So that's that's my only thing. Marilyn, you can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I think once they file, that would be, um, you know, a group quorum. So yeah, hi, I, I, as I mentioned before, I did meet with Michael Dutton on this along with the zoo and we looked at this and, you know, the thoughts were, yep, you know, this was um, feasible, you could do replication. And so, but at the time, you know, it hadn't been flagged by Ken, um, he hadn't been out there. and the vernal pool was new, new to news. So what I have questions for you on that is, um, I asked if we could, as a pre-application, take a look at Ken's um, wetland report, and that was sent out to the commission. So, and, you know, he clearly has it that there's a potential vernal pool. So I, you know, and the, the commission has rules and regulations that we have to uphold by law for everybody, whether it's the town filing a resident, you know, we, we have to keep those rules and regulations um, and not set any precedents. So I wanted to know, um, you just mentioned, was Ken getting that certified? I believe Ken has submitted the paperwork to Natural Heritage to certify it, yes. Okay. All right. So if it's certified, I mean, as you know, a vernal pool can be as small as a puddle or it can be a size of a lake. It, it, you know, it really um, is the, it's the seasonal when, when the um, habitat is, you know, whether it's amphibians or something, that's the season. So I know his report was in 2021. It did he must have done that during the one of the springs, the last two springs then looked for certification on it. I believe he did. Yes, I believe he went back um, in the most recent vernal pool season um, and found the evidence that he needed to certify it. Okay. Um, and, and let me say, too, I, I completely agree with you. I'm not questioning whether or not it's a vernal pool. And I think that it is under the state and the state has its own guidelines. My only thought is under the local bylaw. I don't think it crosses the threshold to need additional protection under the local. All right. So I could not find that under our local bylaws. So if that's out there, I've asked so that I could see it, review it, you know, but I um, have the bylaws in front of me. I couldn't find it. So w without having that, you know, to look at and having that, you know, documented evidence, right now it would hold to me as 100 foot we got to stay away from 100 foot. But if there's something out there that I missed on the bylaws, then certainly I would love to get that if that could be forwarded to me. Um, so that was my, you know, that was my concern after, you know, reading his report and stuff like that. Again, familiar with the site, didn't go out there because unfortunately those ribs are still acting up. But um, that was my uh, question to you with those, with the vernal pool. So. Absolutely. Um, I believe, and I don't have it in front of me, but for some reason, either number nine 
or 12 is ringing a bell is the section that defines a vernal pool as having more than a quarter, holding more than a quarter acre foot of water um, being, having extra protection under, under the local. Now, I know once, that's, I, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, I'm, I didn't mean uh, to interrupt. But one thing that it doesn't say in the local is what that, like what you're allowed to do in that 100 foot buffer. It doesn't say completely stay out of there. It just says it's an extra protective bubble. It doesn't say what you can do in there. I mean, if, if we could, if, if that, that would be very helpful to the commission to get that. Um, you know, I, I understand what the state's protection is and things like that, but I just couldn't find that. You know, I'm under nine and 12 now. Um, I couldn't find it. Um, you know, isolated land subject to flooding, we definitely want to see that quarter mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to make sure it's, you know, it's isolated if it, if it holds the quarter. But vernal pools, as you know, can be dry on certain times of the season. So that, I, that is what I, I don't have the knowledge to see yet. So if we could get that information, I think that would be very helpful to the commission to kind of give you the direction you would, you know, you know, legally would be comfortable for us to have you going. Sure, absolutely. I can um I can put something together and send it to um the members through Bob's office if, if that's awesome. Awesome. Okay. awesome. okay. Great. And maybe Bob could give you an update after we review. I'll have another discussion as a pre-app. That would, you know, uh, get you going. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. Thanks, Eric. Anybody else have any questions? Sarah? Any questions? I think you're muted. Sorry, I don't know why. My phone's acting up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Marilyn covered my questions. And thank you, Eric, for going to trying to give us all that info. Sure, I, I apologize for, I can usually pull up a plan and be a little bit more, a uh, li little more demonstrative here, but I'm at a handicap tonight. Okay, no worries. No, no worries. worries. It happens. Double booking. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, is there anybody out in the? It, it wouldn't be a public comment. It, oh no, public. Oh, because it's a discussion with us. Uh, All right. Do you have anything else, Bob? That you want? Yeah, I just answer? wanted the members to know that uh, the town manager is putting in a, a land application. Uh, Town is acquiring two additional lots adjacent to the Styles and Hart um, parcel, which will be combined into that acreage. Uh, the application required that uh, Wendy say that you were all supportive of the town putting the application in, which will go in tomorrow. Um, so I'm just looking for concurrence that you're all supportive of us adding to that acreage. So I am. I don't, Marilyn. Sarah. I mean, yeah. And the only other quick question I have for Eric is you didn't know that there was a playground that was going to be going out there in the back? Yeah, they're okay. part of the deal with the town is that there has to be some form of passive recreation on the site. Right. Um, so that is definitely in our plan. Okay, I remember that from my meeting. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Great. Um, um Sarah, are you good with the extra acreage for styles and heart? For like just that nice like all the trails and stuff. Yeah. Just trying to wrap Project my head around. Adding. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that's fine. Great. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Um, anything else? Anybody have anything else that they need to bring up? Uh just the next meeting. And again, Eric, that was very helpful. Thank you. I look forward to seeing your information. Um Thank you. The twenty seventh, I will have my computer with me, guys. So I'll I'll try to hop on just to make sure there's a quorum. And I, I mean, I'm just you know relaxing in May, so I I will make myself available just to make sure there's a quorum. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, by then too. Oh, you too. No, I should be have my. Oh, you should be all set. Then, yeah. Got it. All right, great. Um, okay, so the last thing that we have is adjournment. So I can't do it. Like to make a motion. <laughs> I will make a motion to adjourn. Thank you I'll second, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and why do I always forget if we have to do a roll call vote? No, you just say all set. No. <laughs> okay, all set. It's six thirty. Wow, thirty oh. minutes. Yep. 
Thanks, Bye everyone. All. all right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Good luck at your next meeting. Have a good night, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.